So thank you um, for everyone for joining us today for the first session of the Partners in Progress Symposium Series. Um, the first part of this session is going to be recording. We are going to stop the recording once we get to the landlord listening session part. Um, but I would like to go ahead and start today by introducing Marcy Chavez, the Regional Public Housing Director for HUD's Regions 9 and 10, the Far West Network. Marcy? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, and thank you for taking time out of your very busy and very hectic schedules uh, to be here today with us and with the great uh, folks from First Pick. Um, I'm really excited for today's session. Um, I myself uh, worked previously in a housing authority before coming over to HUD. And so I worked very closely with landlords um, and really got a sense of you know, what their concerns were regarding the program and ways that the housing authorities could improve their services. And here at HUD, um, where I'm regional director, I work very closely with the field offices um, who work with the housing authorities, and again, with folks in headquarters on ways that we can strengthen the program. Um, you know, these landlord listening sessions um, have been taking place uh, since 2018, uh, started out as a landlord task force to really seek, you know, feedback from our landlord community on what can we do to make the program better, right? All of us have, you know, our anecdotes of, you know, issues and challenges, and yet, you know, we continue to all strive to serve families. Um, so again, thank you again for your willingness to participate, to give us your feedback and also how we can also work together to support housing authorities to think of you know, ways, uh, creative ways that we can find solutions to address the challenges that families face seeking affordable housing. Um, you know, in the state of Nevada currently, um, between the three housing authorities, the city of Reno, uh, Southern Nevada Regional, and the Nevada Rural Housing Authorities, there's about 15,433 households who are receiving assistance through the Section 8 program. That means through your partnership with the housing authorities, you are providing affordable, quality, and safe housing to families who otherwise would be priced out of the rental market or families who would be facing homelessness or who had been experiencing homelessness. So our partnership with you is very valuable um, to really serve families in need in Nevada. Um, you know, what we've learned from these listening sessions is that landlords um, continue to experience some of the same challenges across the country, um, especially when it comes to working with the Section 8 program. But we also realize, too, that in different regions, there are unique challenges. And that's why today Nevada is the focus of the listening session. Um, and what happens today is the feedback that we receive is shared with our leadership and headquarters, and we look for ways that we can address those challenges together. Um, I'd also be remiss if I didn't thank uh, my team from HUD um, and also the team from the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority uh, under the leadership of John Gressley for um, hosting today's session. We are here to listen to your concerns, your challenges, and also to hear your successes. Um, successes are always good for us because then that gives us a best practice that we can share with other communities. And so the feedback that we get here today um, hopefully can guide us to provide the right technical assistance um, to the agencies as well, you know, so that they can service you better and we can continue to have a strong partnership to serve the families in Nevada. Um, with that, again, I'm excited to be here today and I will turn it back over to Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marcy. Um, so my name is Sarah Fiala and I am a Senior Project Director with First Pick Inc. Um, we are a TA provider that has been working for the past couple of years with HUD's HCD Landlord Task Force. Um, as Marcy mentioned, this symposium really is a continuation of the work that the task force has been doing since 2018. Um, we have done multiple landlord listening sessions. We've spoken with a lot of PHAs um, and a lot of that information um, from both of those um, groups that we've spoken with have really informed um, the HCV Landlord Strategies Guidebook for PHAs, which we have recently published. It's up on the website, which I'll post that link um, in just a little bit. Um, the task force has also created a lot of other documents on that website, both for PHAs and for landlords. Um, we've held, I think, six webinars to date and then two symposiums. So this is the third symposium 
Um, and it really is sort of a culmination of a lot of the work that's taken place so far. So um, it is being spread out over three sessions. Today's first session is um, dedicated to hearing from you, the landlords, about specific concerns that you might have or, or issues that you're encountering with the HCD program. Um, the second part will be sharing that information back with the three um, PHAs in the state of Nevada, working to address concerns that we, we've heard about. Um, and then the third section is really going to be to convene both of those groups, landlords and the PHAs, to really discuss paths to move forward. Um, and that final session will take place um, probably early next year. And of course, as Marcy said again, the end goal is really to improve the experience of um, landlords both in Nevada and then all across the country um, and their experience with the HCV program. Um, we're going to begin by taking just a really quick look at the HCV program overall. Um, I believe most of our landlords that are on today um, have some experience with the program, but as a nice little refresher and sort of just to set the stage for the listening session, um, we're going to walk through a very high level um, overview of the program and some processes. Um, and then we're going to jump right into the landlord listening session. Um, which is the main part of the main purpose for today. We really want to hear you, what you have to say, your feedback, your input, your comments. Um, so we're going to use some polls to sort of guide that discussion. And then we're going to wrap up with a um, Q&A and then look at some, some next steps. Um, so some quick housekeeping. If you have any technical issues today, if you're having problems with your chat, your sound, your audio, you can send a chat to the host. I'm using the chat feature at the bottom or the top, wherever it is on your screen. Um, you're also welcome to submit questions or comments throughout um, the session today, but please know we really are trying to keep most of today's um, session as discussion-based. So we are gonna be monitoring the, monitoring the chat, but we really encourage people to share their thoughts, come off of mute. Um, and verbally share their, their thoughts. So we are going to record all of the comments we've received in chat and we will include that in our summaries um, that we provide to the PJs. Um, but again, we might not be able to answer all the questions in chats directly. And you can always um, also submit any questions or thoughts to either hcv at firstpick.org or the landlord task force at hud.gov. Um, and those email addresses I think were just put up into the chat below. Um, so I mentioned that we we're going to use some polls today, um, which is kind of a fun little thing to do. So just as a little bit of a warm up before we get into um, today's presentation portion, um, Gracie, if you wouldn't mind putting up poll number one. So just to make sure that everybody can sort of get familiarize yourself with the technology, this is just a silly little question. Um, which superpower would you like to have if you could pick? one of the three. I have a personal preference. I know this is very, <laughs> let's see. So we'll give just a couple more minutes. All right, well, um, let's see, I'm just giving give about 10 more seconds for anybody that might want to join in. All right, great. Gracie, would you mind go um, closing that poll and then throwing up the results? So teleportation, clear winner. I guess everybody is really sick of being in their homes <laughs> or in their neighborhoods and everybody just wants to get out. So um, yeah, these are some, just an example of the polls that we'll use. Again, um, we can just sort of to guide some of our conversation today and it's a um, fun little way. I know we're not, these are always best done in person. Um, but just a little bit of interaction with us today. So um, let's go ahead and close that poll out, Gracie, if you wouldn't mind. All right. Okay, and now I am going to um, turn things over to Linda Lance, who is a senior writer and project manager. Um, with us here at First Pick, and she's just gonna give us a quick walkthrough of the HCV program. Linda? Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as she said, I'm just gonna walk through um, some of the process, some of the key points and process of the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Um, you may know a lot of these things already. 
Um, it's, it's the federal government's largest direct rental subsidy program, uh, housing nearly 2.3 million families, which is about 5 million people. It operates as a public-private partnership, so it's funded by the federal government, which goes through then the Department of Housing and Urban Development, we call HUD. Um, then the vouchers are administered by the public housing agencies, or PHAs, which is how you um, who you work with and get, get paid by. And then um, families are housed by private landlords, which is um, your role in this. So um, the program serves, um, help, primarily helps to house extremely low income families. And the majority of those, as you can see from the um, pie chart, are um, older adults or people with disabilities or families with children. So then we're going to look again at how this public-private partnership works and who, what are some of the roles of the folks who are involved in that, the agencies who are involved. Um, funded by HUD, provides funds to the PHAs who make payments on behalf of the, um, the tenants who have the vouchers. Uh, the PHAs then will administer the HCV program and um, provide the vouchers to the tenant families to look for a housing. Um, the landlord's job is to provide safe, decent, sanitary housing to the tenants at a reasonable rent. And um, the families get the, receive the vouchers, they have a briefing and they'll go onto the private market and search for a unit that's owned by a private landlord, which is you, the same as pretty much any, any um, renter will do. Um, one thing that's different there is that they're going to be paying 30 to 40% of their income towards the rent, and the housing authority is going to pay the rest um, up to locally established caps. And as the landlord, you're going to interview, you're going to screen tenants, and once you and the tenant have completed paperwork and inspections, then you're going to get payment from both the tenant and the um, PHA. As, as, um, as Marcy Chavez mentioned, there's three um, housing authorities in Nevada, and those housing authorities administer more than 16,000 vouchers. And you can see here the, the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority, Nevada Rural Housing Authority, and Reno um, Housing Authority. So while there are um, rules and regulations as to how PHAs administer the HCV program, they also have some flexibility. So if you work with more than one housing authority, that might be sometimes why you see some differences. Um, uh, for example, everybody has to conduct periodic um, inspections of units. They have to use HUD-defined standards to um, set the maximum subsidy amounts or payment standards in their area. And then they have to conduct rent reasonableness, which is where they're going to check the rent prices based on the market, uh, what the market is paying and the condition of the units to make sure that those um, units are properly priced. But they also have flexibility on how they administer the program, and that can include that a PHA can conduct um, inspections on an annual or a biennial basis, um, which is true of um, Reno, both Reno and the Rural Housing Authority have chosen to do biennial inspections. And um, small PHAs in rural areas can select to do uh, inspections every three years. They can also set up their um, payment standards on a regional basis or by zip code. Um, not, not everybody can do that by zip code, but that allows for, um, allows for some differentiation. So if you have an area where, where some things are more expensive in one zip code and less expensive in another, you can, uh, in some markets, you can set that zip code, that payment standard according to the zip code, and that allows you to more closely match your private um, rental market. Another area of difference is that um, PHAs can set the order of operations. 
So some PHAs may find it more efficient to conduct their rent reasonable check um, before a unit is, is inspected, and some may find it works better for them to do it after the unit's inspected. It just kind of depends on what, what works best for that PHA. Um, PHAs also have some uh, incentives that they can put in place uh, to attract or retain landlords. And that may include lease up bonuses, damage mitigation insurance. Um, the rural Nevada has a security deposit program, which can help um, uh, tenants be able to um, move into certain units and landlords feel a certain uh, level of comfort with that. So uh, just a quick overview of why someone might choose to rent to um, Housing Choice Voucher tenants. Uh, we know that from, um, from research that the tenants tend to rent long-term, uh, an average of more than eight years. But one thing that's uh, obviously a positive is that uh, landlords know that they're going to receive predictable on-time payments from the PHA each month. Um, it's also a lot of uh, landlords report that they get a lot of satisfaction out of knowing that they are serving uh, some of the most valuable, vulnerable families in, um, in their communities. And another thing that makes it, uh, may make landlords want to work with Housing Choice Voucher Program is some of those additional incentives that a PHA might offer, like a lease up bonus, uh, as I said, damage mitigation funds, tenant landlord mediation services. Those are just a couple of examples. Uh, there are also a lot of um, misconceptions about the Housing Choice Voucher Program. Some of these are holdovers from older versions of the program, older um, ways that the program was conduct were conducted in the past that have been updated. Um, if you hear someone say, I don't think I, I qualify to accept vouchers, you do. There's no special uh, criteria to be able to rent to a tenant for housing choice voucher. Uh, your unit does need to pass a basic health and safety inspection. Uh, sometimes uh, landlords will say, if I accept one voucher tenant, all of my units will have to be um, rented to housing choice voucher tenants, which is also not true. Uh, landlords evaluate applicants for each of their vacancies. A housing choice voucher applicant is, um, is vetted and screened exactly the same as any market rate. And a landlord is not under an obligation to choose a housing choice voucher applicant over a market rate applicant. Um, I've heard that a PHA will keep me from evicting a problem tenant. That's also not true. Housing choice voucher tenants are bound to the terms of their rental agreements, just the same as non-housing choice voucher tenants. Uh, tenants who violate their lease, uh, who are housing choice voucher holders, also uh, jeopardize their keep their voucher altogether. So that's a good reason for them to not violate their leases. Uh, let's take a quick look at the lease up process. Now that's that may vary according to PHA, but these are some general um, steps. The, um, the landlord is going to advertise a vacant unit. Um, the leasing process is, is similar um, with a, rent, a private rental market versus a, a voucher tenant. So if you're really interested in renting to a voucher tenant, you can include that in your listing, something like, you know, you're welcome, a housing choice voucher tenants welcome. Um, as you receive applications, you're going to carry out your usual uh, background check with the same things that you do with, um, with any, any applicant. Um, as you select a tenant, you're going to turn in some paperwork to the PHA that provides details of the unit and proves your ownership to the unit. Uh, the unit will get inspected by the PHA to ensure that it meets basic health and safety criteria. The, the PHA is going to review your requested rent amount uh, and make sure that the price is reasonable for the area 
and that it's affordable for that tenant based on the payment standard and based on the tenant's income. That's the rent reasonableness we mentioned before. And finally, the owner and the PHA are going to, um, this is a next slide, are going to sign a housing assistance payment, which is a, a lease that is uh, contracted that's between the PHA and the landlord. And at around the same time, the landlord and the tenant will sign the lease that the tenant needs to abide by. And as soon as um, everything is signed and approved, you, the owner, are going to receive your rent payment from the PHA and also from the tenant each month. And with that, I will turn things back to Sarah to go over the next section of today's events. Thanks a lot, Linda. Um, so um, after that little overview, and again, that's sort of just setting the stage, um, I'm sure a lot of that is information that um, you as landlords who are participating with the program are already aware of. Um, but before we get started, just a couple of notes about today's listening session. Um, we are going to stop the recording. Um, we want you to be able to um, share freely. This information is going to be shared with um, the PHAs, summarized and shared with the PHAs. Um, we will not use any of your identifying information, um, but we also ask that when you are talking, um, please to not identify PH staff or voucher families by name. Um, and again, the goal really is to hear from you about, um, about the HCV program, um, what you enjoy about it, what you might have problems with, some issues. Um, so we really want you to feel free to, to share with us. Um, I am going to be facilitating today's discussion. I am not a HUD employee. Um, I am a neutral party. However, um, I'm not gonna be able to answer um, your specific questions about the, the HCV program. So again, if you have specific questions about your units or um, your tenants or anything like that, we'd ask you just either contact your PHA or you can put your question into the chat or email us um, and we'll get back to you individually. So today, if you would like to share, um, we would ask that you please raise your hand and you can find that if you go to um, your, your menu bar on your screen, there should be some three little dots if it's not right there and you can see reactions. Um, if you click on reactions, it'll give you sort of a menu and it'll allow you to sort of raise your virtual hand. Um, so we ask you to stay muted until um, you raise your hand and then we'll try to get to everybody who's raised their hand. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Deb, I see your hand raised. Um, so that's that's how we'll sort of go through and we'll call on people when we get started. Um, and uh, then at that point, once we call on you, you can feel free to unmute and share. And again, if you have specific questions, um, please go ahead and email those or stick those into the chat, although we may not be able to get back to you during today's sessions. Um, so we're gonna get started with a poll. And Gracie, if you wouldn't mind pulling up, um, well, first, if you could stop the recording, please. <laughs> 